Welcome to Greenwich Village. Christmas time. Well, this is James Comic on the bike, welcoming back our worldwide viewership, and we're here on West 26th Street. We're gonna run into Gallery Le Long 528 and take a look at signs from LA. Well, we're popping in here right at the end of the opening. I had a uh, little studio visit with Wayne Fajita, so I was a little late on my way here. Well, we're gonna swing into the side gallery and take a look at some paintings by Iva Galiva. I believe this one is I Dreamt That You Took Me Away and We Would Ride and Ride 2009. Oil and collage on canvas. I was especially interested to see this show because I think that uh, there's a lot of great stuff happening out in California. I was out uh, for a show at Daniel Weinberg in uh, February and saw some very intriguing stuff. This is also by Ivan. This is called Eric Cook. This is by Annie Lappin. And I think uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, this work has a relationship or a uh, reflection of the Western landscapes. It's also by Annie Lapp, and this one is titled The History or Hysterical Memory. This is 40 by 60 inches. I believe this is acrylic. We've got some figurative stuff happening here. Some pieces by Whitney Bradford. She's got some oil and ink on wood panels here. And this black orb has made me think of Adolf Gottlieb. In this action here, it looks like something splashing through a surface of water or something. This is also by Whitney. This is Untitled Birds, 60 by 84. And oh, it looks like she's painting with a roller, cutting stencils, and then uh, squeegeeing through her bird forms. Well, these are some of the pieces that I really was interested in coming down and seeing in life. It's by Alexandra. Grant. It's titled Body One, second iteration after Michael Joyce's This 2010. It's oil on linen. 80 by 70 inches. What do you think of the paintings? Well, I saw them in LA. And you saw I the really dig the combination of text. And you like the text. So do I. Thanks, Amanda. Oh, I like this. These are very richly worked surfaces, lots of text. It's kind of symmetrical, kind of funky. Makes me think a little bit of uh, what Eric Parker was doing about 10 years ago. Let's see what else Alexandra's working on. This is a smaller piece. I think text could be one of the new frontiers of uh, you like text? painting. Yeah, painting art these days. I love text. Yeah, it can be so many things. It's titled Body Six. Oh, and I like this. She's really building up the impasto on here, and the patterning, and the outlines are very uh, obsessive. It's very nice. Twelve grand. Well, this is great. I guess if you're in Los Angeles and Hollywood, the movie theaters are like your temples. This is 
by Kristen Everberg. This is titled Cinema LA Theater 2010. This is oil and enamel on panel. Oh, this is great when you get up and look at it closely. It looks like she squeezed this all out of a confectioner's tube or something. Looking like Jackson Pollock was painting nice uh, interiors of theaters. Well, this has been a quick run through of Five from LA, Whitney Bradford, Kristen Everberg, Alexandra Grant, Iva Garoguvia, and Anna Lappin. Here at Gallery Le Long. Oh, we snuck across the hall. Now we're here at Mitchell, Ennis, and Nash. Taking a look at Jacob Casse, Robert Morris, and Virginia Overton. I guess these two pieces are combined in a diptych titled Untitled by Jacob Casse. Okay, so this part of the diptych has got silver deposit on canvas. That's an impressive piece. This is by Virginia Overton, Untitled Triangle. This is Douglas Fir. I would say that it's got to be at least 12 feet tall. It's a nice plank. Well, this is great. We're talking about. Uh, Good examples of post-minimalist art. This is also by Jacob. It's untitled. Very subtle. You get a rectangle with a curve out of one side. I wonder if these two pieces are ediptic because they sort of go together like uh, a set of parentheses. by the classic post-minimalist artist Robert Morris. Yeah, I've been doing a series on uh, the history of post-minimalism and uh, there's one person whose name and fingerprints are all over uh, 25 or 30 years of art starting at about 19... 65, 64, it's Robert Morris. And all he's done is he's got two pieces of felt, they're both square. And then he's let the one on the front fold over and the artwork and the, the composition sort of makes itself. I guess that was his co contribution to process art. It's by Virginia Overton. Untitled. This looks like my last uh, sheet rocking job. Not very good with spackle. But it's great, the uh, spillover kind of relates to a Jackson Pollock or maybe a Richard Serra cast lead piece. Beautiful Robert Morris piece. This is from 1976, and of course it's untitled. Black felt. Robert Morris was one of the first people after Joseph Boyce to start using felt uh, extensively in his work. 
is kind of a wonderful supplement about the, the folds and the where the gravity pulls down the forms. The simple geometric cuts. So this is Jacob Cassie, Robert Morris, Virginia Overton. Mitchell Innes and Nash. Thanks, Kate. Uh -huh.